So uh, without more delay, I'd like to introduce David Rockefeller, um, who will talk about how deep is the ocean. <laughs>
and the suitability of nearshore waters and beaches for human use or not. And we looked at the number of people whose livelihoods depended on healthy, accessible oceans. And the figures are, are astounding. Um, from navies to container ships and cruise ships, from fishermen to restaurateurs, from coastal dwellers to coastal visitors, divers, surfers, and sailors. We all depend upon the oceans um, in one form or another. We learned that 50% of us in the U.S. live in coastal counties. There are a lot of people who, who love to be near the oceans because those are where the cities uh, are, or where the cool breezes are. Um, and that, by the way, is a pattern that's pretty much worldwide. Um, we are a nation of conservationists, you might say, but actually less than one penny of every conservation dollar goes to protect the oceans, while more than 70% of the Earth's surface is covered by oceans. Not the right, <laughs> not the right uh, order, uh, from my perspective. Since the Pew Report came out, scientists have verified that CO2 emissions have dramatically acidified the oceans, uh, particularly since, of course, the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. And if we continue at the current rate of rise uh, of population, of use of energy, and of CO2 emissions, we can expect, perhaps even by mid-century, that the shell-bearing creatures of the sea could be gone. Crabs, shrimp, lobsters, as well as the key microorganisms and corals. And these are not trivial issues. I'm glad to say more and more you can read about these issues in whether it's Harvard Magazine or the New York Times or other uh, on, on television. Ocean issues are beginning to come forward. I would like to take um, credit for that, but I can't. I'm just simply delighted that that's true. After the Pew Commission completed its report and disbanded, I decided, uh, after some thought, to do my part to bring the message of imperiled ocean health to a wider public, in particular the sailing and boating community, of which I have been all my life an enthusiastic part. With us tonight are several important colleagues from the organization that I then began, Sailors for the Sea. David Treadway over there, my co-founder and a trustee. Chris Mancini, who runs our programs. Raise your hand, Chris. <laughs> and right in back of him, Ned Cabot, also a trustee. So if we're having conversations tonight and you want to know more, you want to know what David said that they don't agree with, uh, please ask these people uh, because they're very, very knowledgeable. What we basically did was model ourselves on a number of uh, conservation entities that had taken uh, lovers of a resource and users of a resource and converted them into stewards. So Trout Unlimited for the trout streams and the trout within them, Surf Rider for beaches and the Ocean Conservancy as well, Audubon for birds and marshlands, flyways. Each of these organizations has been successful at turning recreational users of a precious resource into stewards and protectors of that resource. Sailors for the Sea seeks to engage sailors and other boaters as the principal stewards of the ocean. And we've had professional leadership for three years and we're making good progress and Chris Mancini is a very important part of that. So I've been thinking of ways in which the World of Public Conversations Project as an organization and Sailors for the Sea have agendas in common or might. Um, and uh, Dave talked about some of these. Public Conversations is about taking important and often controversial, usually controversial issues and exploring common ground or at least engendering respectful conversation between the parties. And Sailors for the Sea aims to educate boaters and other members of the public about pressing issues related to ocean health. 
there's so <coughs> many ocean health issues of great importance which have strong advocates on both sides. So I have a list of three of twelve. Um, wastewater discharge from cruise ships. The cruise ship owners, obviously, it costs a lot if they have to have to uh, treat all of the various uh, waters and oils that are, are produced uh, on these floating cities, uh, whereas the EPA and other clean water ad ad advocates and people who are conch fishermen in the, in the Caribbean have a very strong desire not to have noxious fluids poured overboard. Coral demolition. The local gatherers often in the in the Western Pacific of exotic fish who are poor people who happen to live next to very beautiful coral areas uh, and that's their business and often use either explosives or poisons to stun fish that turn up in aquaria in 